Jake, we haven't been burned alive yet, but I'm afraid because people haven't heard the discussion we just recorded that they're about to listen to about our thoughts on Tears of the Kingdom. Are you concerned at all about this, Jake? I am concerned. Every 20 minutes of this recording, you can look over while you're talking and see me go, are we making a big mistake? In my mind, thinking about it. Because we get in there. We talk about pretty a lot of stuff in this game that, frankly, we don't like. And I just think the reason we're recording this now at the front is to say that the purpose of us being so negative is not to make anybody feel bad about enjoying Tears of the Kingdom and we recognize things that are good about the game but it's just we're just talking about art not trying to yuck anybody's yum having a having an informed discussion now that we've had time to think about the game exactly right I mean there's tons of there's tons of positive discussions out there and we there are elements yeah. of that here as well so if that is what you want I strongly encourage you to close this video go find another discussion we've had our own on this channel but Jake and I we wanted to approach this game for a different angle and try to explain why we felt like in the end even though there were many parts of the game that impressed and surprised us why we were underwhelmed in the end so that's where we're going to leave it off here so get ready for our discussion that we just finished recording and we hope you enjoy it but if not uh, let us know in the comments <laughs> oh god okay bye <laughs> <laughs> so we have some complaints about tears of the kingdom isn't that right jake oh yeah that's right been stewing on these com complaints marinating and now i feel like we're ready take me out of the oven let everybody sniff up these sweet complaints we <laughs> <laughs> yes, as if people were waiting just to inhale them immediately. Yeah, but yeah, we yeah. did have to wait. This is already off to a weird start. <laughs> we had to wait, though, I feel like, until the time was right, Jake. I don't yeah. know if now's the time, but we would have been roasted alive had we done this in the first mm. few weeks, right? So I think enough time has passed. I think the door is now opened to some discussion about the fact that maybe Tears of the Kingdom isn't perfect or gr as great as everyone seems to think not that hey everyone's welcome to their own thoughts i'm not going to try and convince you otherwise or anyone otherwise and i think honestly i think i had I, it's a very fun time still i had i spent over 100 hours with the game i know jakey spent close to that as well yeah obviously there's something about that that kept us coming back for that duration uh even if that even if something may have happened at some point that changed that perhaps beating the game where we're like Maybe we've seen enough. Anyways, um, before we get into our specific complaints, Jake, and we'll I think we'll probably time code it too. People want to just want to skip ahead to that. Yeah. I just want top level discussion. How are you feeling? How how did Tears of the Kingdom make you feel? A game we had waited six years for, over four years from its uh, announcement, I believe. So a long time. Um, did it deliver? Like, is it what you wanted? Is it what you expected? I mean, for the longest time, we didn't even know what to expect from this game until like literally months before. So, mm. just overall thoughts, Jake. Yeah, overall, I this is one of those things where we're going to get into all the complaints and I will understand anybody that says, "Jake, not I did not feel that way." I understand that that position 100%, but for me, I look at Tears of the Kingdom and I say, "This is an incredibly well built video game. I think it's like awesome to look at. I think it has some top level like really cool ideas, but for me, it's not the magic is gone it never reached out and made an emotional or sentimental impact on me the way that breath of the wild did and i think so much of tears of the kingdom for me was saying okay we're taking breath of the wild one of my favorite games of all time and the big question for me going into tears of the kingdom was what are we focusing on what are we changing what is the remix how are we changing coming home to this high rule and i spent the entire game so searching for meaning and I never quite found it. I never, there's so much there. It's really, really wide. But at the end of the day, I felt like it was a, it was like a painting. It was like beautiful to look at, but that, well, ah, yeah, but that was it. Yeah. 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 And that sounds, I like the way you put that. That sounds deep. I think my issue is overall similar. I don't know mm. if I would have positioned it exactly that way though. I think it ultimately basically is. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the game. I had fun with it. You know, I, I, I think moment to moment, I probably had more fun with this than I did Breath of the Wild, which again mm. is a game that I famously didn't quite love. I was one of the lowest review scores for it at the time, even though it was basically the second highest on a review scale. Um, so I still thought it was great, and uh, you know, I very deeply respected what it did, and I could see so much potential in a sequel to it. 
So the weird thing about Tears of the Kingdom, Jake, is this is a game that, for one, go went in a whole different direction than I expected from a possible sequel, to the point that it literally did not address, I think, a single one of my complaints from Breath of the Wild. In fact, it doubled down on some of them. I I already didn't like Breath of the Wild's interface all that much in terms of the uh, menus and UI, oh. and it just went, this game goes haywire with them uh, to, uh, to a degree. So yeah. we'll talk about that more, but again, moment to moment, I actually do think I had more fun with this. You know, like, be able to create, you know, create things, craft things from the environment, which is a, a mechanic uh, in a game that, or in a, you know, is a game of mechanic I don't usually like. I don't like crafting, but this game made it feel organic enough. I'm like, this is cool. I'm going to just plug this into that and it does something. Hey, that's mm. neat. Um, but I think to your point, it, it doesn't amount to anything. It doesn't, it didn't feel cohesive to me. Like they just, it feels like they just took a huge box of crap, dumped it into the world. It's like, hey, go figure it out yourself. Go have fun. And I think my big issue, which we'll probably circle back to at some point, is that it doesn't know whether it's a game or a sandbox. Breath of the Wild is so much clearer to me. It's like, I felt like that game knew what it was. Tears of the Kingdom doesn't know what it is. And like, I, I'm seeing, and you know, it, to, whether to a credit or detriment, I'm seeing amazing things from creators on TikTok and Twitter of the insane things they're making. It's impressive, like that is so cool. I never once had that drive. I never felt compelled to spend hours to make this device that I could accomplish, you know, just by running there and doing something by whacking my sword at it, you know? Um, so I think that's where, I think my issue is that it never feels cohesive. And so even if I had more mo more fun moment to moment, it lacks the peaks and valleys that uh, Breath of the Wild did, where I, I don't have the huge, like, holy crap, or, you know, the, the sense of accomplishment from doing something. Because the moments that do exist here, which, you know, largely mirror that Breath of the Wild and aren't even fresh in and of themselves. So... Mm. That's kind of where I'm at. The game isn't cohesive to me. Yeah, and I agree. And I think when we get into our more specific examples here, it will maybe clarify any confusion out there. Because when we talk about a game being cohesive and not having like those peaks and valleys and it just kind of being a, here's a sandbox, make your own fun, rather than maybe implementing limit limitations and, and trying to create a system that funnels us towards a specific experience with a specific ca catharsis. Right. Uh, I think what we're really seeing there is a mismatch it's a lot of things, but I think for me what it is, is there's a huge uh, mismatch between narrative and game structure. And these two things, they exist in the same video game, but have nearly nothing to do with each other and barely ever speak. And like I, I, and I think some people that l like can make that separation or make those things come together in their own heads, but in my experience, uh, it did not. So I think I think we should we should just start going through one by one. Uh, our I've got a list we, of hot takes. Are we ready for this? I, I feel like Jake. I'm afraid. I don't know if we've buttered up the audience enough to like to allow this without us getting roasted live. I'm like, do we need to say a few more good things about the game? Like, should we? Do I'm we gonna need get to roasted. I'm gonna get roasted. <laughs> I, I, it's okay. I said I, I didn't you're like, buttered up to get roasted. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm buttered up. I just said I didn't like Petey Piranha, and that was it for me with the comments. So it's it's uh, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to jump in. And can I submit my first hot take? Go for it, Jake. Please. Okay. The depths, this huge, huge map underneath the map of Hyrule. Yep. So many people are gonna, you know, I've heard this complaint since the game was revealed. It's using the same map as Breath of the Wild. How can that be interesting? Well, it can be interesting because we have this whole second map underneath Hyrule. Uh, gr sounds great. In practice, uh, this I'm gonna be using this word a lot. I found it to be meaningless uh <laughs> it is the the coolest part of the depths is the first time you discover yep it. i was gonna say it exactly the same never gets any cooler than that the first nope. time you you throw one of those little uh seeds and you're like surely it's gonna hit a wall no. surely it's gonna hit a wall and then it just doesn't like that experience is awesome and uh the emotional peak st uh starts and ends there the uh the fact that like it's one biome, and it looks the same the entire time. Once you've spent 10 minutes in the depths, you've spent three hours there. You've the fact all, that yeah. it's it's Destiny 2 level, hey, it's the enemies you've seen the entire time you've been playing this game, but now they have a little bit of paint on them. Like, so unbelievably boring, the definition of bland, and I kind of feel like it would have been with restraint. It could have been so much better. These these areas are presented where you dive into the depths 
on the map blatantly. You come across them without any aplomb. It's kind of just like, they're just like there, like, yeah, come in because you're supposed to come in. And all of the the big seeds that illuminate the area, they're perfectly spaced apart so that you can go from one to the next to the next. It's all such a video game. It's all just there to provide you with more. And if you're somebody that says, well, Tears of the Kingdom is better than Breath of the Wild because it contains Breath of the Wild plus more, right. then hey, I guess how am I supposed to argue with that? But the the lack of focus, the lack of intention, they never use the depths to make a moment more interesting or scary or meaningful. And instead, yeah. it's just this huge blanket underneath the entire world. Could you imagine if there was just like three spots in the whole game where you could enter the depths and you you would played for 30 hours and then all of a sudden you walk over somewhere and you go, Maybe there's an NPC and they're looking at it and they're like, what the heck is this? <laughs> and then, you know what I mean? Like, it would have meant something. But yeah. the fact that it's just like, oh, we got to dot the map with these the same way we dot the map with yep. towers, the same way we dot the map with the uh, shrines, the same way we dot the map with whatever the heck, we, with the guy with his sign. It's just like, it's just another thing. And what you're actually doing in the depths is virtually identical to what you're doing everywhere else in the game. Yeah, no, Jake, you're 100% right, yeah. I think. Uh, the, the best moment is when you go into the depths, you're like, what the hell is this place? Like, you have the amazing, that cool horn sound. The yeah. place is gigantic, you know, it, but it only accomplished that impressiveness once, right? From the rest of that, from that point onward, is just you stumbling around in the dark, throwing seeds around, which I guess exists only to justify the caves above ground, to give you a reason to go explore those. And it, it really hit me, Jake, when... I mean, again, like to the game's credit, there's something mm. just inherently fun about controlling Link that somehow took me hours to realize, why am I wasting my life down here? There is no reason to. I, I made a tweet about this. It, it, this is when it hit me. Like, this is just a big closet. Oh. I'm just running around finding Link's ancient outfits, which I don't even care about, honestly. I don't even wear them. I just wear what I need to in any given situation, which usually isn't those outfits. And, uh... And the and beyond that, the only other things of note are the Yiga clan areas where you can get blueprints, which are for vehicles that are useless, from what I can tell. Useless. I never use them. Yeah, no. useless. Like it's a cool idea. I never use them. And yeah, it just it just started to aggravate me, Jake. Especially because too, they have those little like, you know, sh and this is also my time. Another bit complaint I'll get to later mm -hmm. on. But they they have those like little uh, shrine areas or the the not shrines actually the uh, little build areas where you can build contraptions to help you explore. Oh. But I always end up building the same thing over and over because they give you the parts for it. Well, that's right? how you're, but that's but that's exactly what the game wants you to do. It says it says here is a jigsaw puzzle. There are six pieces. Put them together. And yeah. it's and the entire game suffers from this. It's in in literature. It's what I would call the author's thumb. When you see a choice happening simply because right. the creator wants it to happen, and it's like it's exactly what you said. It's like oh, that's why the seeds are here for this area. There's this little thing. Why are the Yiga down there? Because we decided. And it's 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 all just like video game stuff. And there, there's not, it's, it's, again, it's that search for meaning where it's like, yeah. when are you supposed to exploring the depths have a feeling that like perks you up? I have no idea. There were just a handful of moments, Jake, that gave me a sensation akin to that. And I'll say what they are. Again, the first time you go in, that's still the highlight. Entering the first time is like, what is this place? Awesome. Great. I love yeah. the sound. Anytime you enter the depths from above ground, amazing. Love that. That's very cool. Uh, but. Uh, beyond that, the other times I thought I came across something neat was when I stumbled acro across the fifth shrine before yeah. I was supposed to. I didn't even know. Like, I thought it was a whole secret area. I'm like, oh my god, this is actually really freaking cool. It, especially because that actually might be my favorite shrine. I'll tie into something else later on. Okay. Made good use of like the Ultra Hand stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm actually building contraptions to get around mm -hmm. here. This is cool, but then it was like undermined a little bit when I realized that, you know, it's essentially part of the critical path. I just found it before I was supposed to, which kind of like retroactively lessened it. Um, instead of it feeling like a secret, I'm like, oh, everyone's going to find it eventually. Uh, but it was cool when I thought it was unique. And then third, I did like the cute touch of the Yiga clan of how it explains where he went in Breath of the Wild. You know, the little right. tie-in, the, the main guy, the bigger guy. Yeah. I thought that was fun. I like that. That aside, those are a minuscule part of the depths. The rest, as you said, is just like, you know, leftovers from content you'd seen elsewhere. And that's basically it. And yeah, I think, Jake, to, to speak to more to the issue with the depths, mm. uh, you know, beyond it just being an inversion of the world above, which I guess is kind of cool if you don't, you no. know, 
don't I give it. No, I'm not willing to give it that. It <laughs> I, I don't. Cool. I mean, yeah, it's. I don't know how I feel about that to be honest. Uh, but the my main issue with the depths, Jake, beyond yeah. what we touched on, where it's, it, I mean, where it's meaningless, is it doesn't tie in anything. Like exactly. it, I think it could have been what I think might have helped is if, if there were actually a proper reason to go explore. Where mm. uh, I, I guess the main reason I mentioned, uh, the main reason beyond, um, uh, actually, I guess the main reason beyond the clothing is so you can find the uh, Zonite, so you can build your battery power. But the problem is. <laughs> this speaks to a larger issue. The gameplay loop of the game is broken. You don't really need bigger batteries. You rarely need much more battery power, which lessens the incentive to find Zonite, which lessens the incentive to go into the depths in the first place. And uh, it, it, so my issue is that the gameplay loops, they don't, they don't work that well. And mm. I wish there had been more incentive to go into the depths. For example, had they kind of flirted with this element with one of the towers where you have to go underground. Oh, I guess you only go into the depths, though. You go underground and you ascend into it. Had mm. all the towers been underground initially to like force them upward you know by ascending into them that might have been cool or that could have been the case for the shrines maybe maybe you have to find the light seeds first underground to make the shrine pop up uh, uh, above it would give more meaning to what you're doing and i know for some like well that's just extra stuff to accomplish the same things but no but like they're interconnected then like it makes sense you know they already have these systems just poorly done just connected all in a way that makes more sense in the gameplay from a gameplay no, perspective. I mean, 100%, because as it is right now, 90% of what you're doing in the depths is you're going from one little light thing to the next light thing yep. just to uncover the that's depths. It. Which, why? Why? And actually, Jake, I was maybe 60% done with this, with those light seed things. And I'm like, you know, the, the, whatever they're called, the shrine things underground. Yeah. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Yeah. I, 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 I'm I about to beat the game. Why am I still looking for these things? I don't need them. Yes, no. I, I I realize that they correspond to where the shrines are above. So if you have trouble finding a shrine, you can do it this way. Though this seems to be a more boring way of looking for shrines. And so I gave up. I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. I'm wasting my life away finding these light seeds, which isn't accomplishing anything. But for some, for some reason in the moment, I think I'm kind of enjoying it but i'm like am i you know it's it, so yeah. strange it is a it is a callback to an older kind of open world game where you are literally just like checking boxes in your mind it's like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna because because it is on a certain level fun to just control link i get right. that and I, and I think that's pretty much all it has going for it. And I do think it would have been more impactful if you couldn't have discovered that, that late game area on your own. And it was something that was like, I, I could not stop thinking about this. Remember the hand enemy? The hands? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Could you, could who, who could forget? How, why can't the hands drag you to the depths? Oh my God. That actually is a great idea. And then you have to like get out from the depths, it's, you know? Yes. Yeah, like, could I you imagine that. if your first experience in the oh, depths it... was an enemy took you there? Oh man, that's like, there's, cool. There's uh, stuff yeah. you could do. There, it's yeah, it's see, not capitalized on. Yeah, see, kind of getting back to my point of this game mm -hmm. lacking cohesiveness. Yeah, like, I felt like one of the themes of Breath of the Wild was survival, and I yes. don't feel that here. You know, no. like you can easily teleport your way out of danger, which you could before as well, but it feels even more pronounced in this game. And yeah, I mean, I think having elements like that where maybe you can't warp out of the depths, maybe you have to find some way out, you know, and you have to survive after being grabbed by the hands. Like, that's a cool idea. Like, that's a yep. thematic tie in, and I love it. Um, and that's, yeah, it, 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 I feel like the blueprint was here. They just mm -hmm. didn't tie it all together well enough. And, uh, you know, maybe the depths are too big, Jake. Like, I think it might They're be too more big. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Had, had each depth location been its own little region, not in interconnected to the rest, I think that actually could have been cooler. There actually is a handful of those. Maybe I came across at least one of them. Uh, and I don't know if there's anything worth their finding. But I'm like, this is actually kind of cool. I like the uh, mm. idea of this being a little, bit, a little bit more contained. You don't need the whole map mirrored again. I it's, Most of it's empty and boring and... And you don't even know where you're going for a lot of it because you can't see where you're going. So the, the map mirrored fact bothers me so much because people <laughs> say it and they're like, you know, it's the opposite, the inverse of the right. Hyrule. Like that alone is supposed to impress me. And I go, okay, so <laughs> like, yeah. what difference does it make? I don't like. Okay, like, it's that, is that impressive? I don't think so. And it and it's I don't know. It's just like Zelda so often capitalizes on like the most 
boring generic themes so and and it does this because they're so wide that you can you can in your head decide that they connect it's like it's like good and evil everything is good and evil there's the sky islands and there's the depths good and evil right. i just did it for you <laughs> and i you know what i mean it's just like it's just nebulous so i don't know i yeah. wish it was more this was a this was a lot of good stuff on the depths are you ready for your first I am. It, it kind of okay. ties in. I already Please. brought up a little bit here. Uh, and actually, it, we discussed this before recording. Like a lot of our points are like interconnected in a yeah. way. Like you start pulling in one thread, the whole thing unravels. Mm -hmm. But D Jake, beyond yes. the depth, mm -hmm. you know, the other big addition was the sky. And the sky is also meaningless. Yeah, the sky meaningless. is also largely meaningless. Like, I, it, it is completely dead and vacant of life. And then a lot of the content is effectively copy and pasted. You come across that same freaking quadrant island with a little sh thing that shoots you and it has a shrine there and the gumball machine. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, once I realized that too, I'm like, why am I seeking out all these islands? Like, it's not doing anything for me. The main incentive uh, really is to... It's so weird. Like, one of the main reasons to go back up there is just to buy Zonai parts. You oh, know, no. From... That's, like, the only reason to go back up there. Yeah, right. That's and, yeah. <laughs> and then that ties into other issues I have. I'll get to that later. Yeah. But the sky, like, it's it seems cool. And, you know, I had I had some fun exploring. I can't deny that. Mm. But, like, once it sets in again, they're like, I'm just doing the same crap that I've done everywhere else just now in the sky that there's no one here. There's no NPCs. There's no real story going on. Um, I'm just seeking out things I can also find elsewhere by and large, minus the Zonai pieces, and uh, and I don't know why I'm doing it, you know? Like, I would just build, you know, uh, aircraft and fly me to the next one, and that was it. And I, I, by and large, I would end up using the sky as just a vehicle to get elsewhere on the ground. Yep. I would use a sky tower, mm -hmm. use it a hip-hop, hip or hip-hop, hop from the uh, jump jump rope or whatever hop from different islands. i don't know what you're trying to say jake you know uh, skip to different islands and skydive from there to somewhere else on the ground and which is weird because then that also has a side effect of removing the whole i don't know uh feat of getting to where i wanted to originally but i'm mm. like making it trivial like breath of the wild i felt accomplished when i reached like a high point or something but here i'm like i'll just fly there you know um so yeah it's 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 hard to separate my issues with that from uh, the depths and the rest of the game because but it does feel like this guy just exists for me to go underground find zonai go up into the air mine it for battery power which i can then use to pa to juice the devices that i get from the gumball machines which are randomly rewarded and it's all just so weird it's such a weird gameplay loop jake Oh, 100 percent because the gameplay loop is dependent on you wanting to cut down the time it takes you to go from point a to point b and and the my note by the way that I wrote down before this for the Sky Islands was here's what I said there is nothing fun about the Sky Islands you use two <laughs> kinds of vehicles and get everything yep. done stuff kind <laughs> of looks cool off in the distance and yeah. then it's it's nothing you see a you see a crazy crazy stacked tower of Sky Islands and you go what is this turns out it's designed for you to jump off the top for a stupid <laughs> jump through the rings mini game so right. that you can get a dumb reward that is ultimately meaningless. I, and and that's like there's like three different things you do on the Sky Islands. None of them are fun. The T's of the Zonai machine little the constructs that right. that goes nowhere and no, is, nowhere. is meaningless. Yeah. And those are just video game elements to help you do video game things. Okay, fine. And uh, getting the Zonai and making the vehicles and going from point A to point B. Zelda Breath of the Wild was awesome because it was a quiet little journey that knew you were like crossing this entire like country going from place to place right. arriving showing up in a town and everybody was like you're here yeah and this game is like uh, exactly what you said it encourages you to fly up to a sky island get in a plane skip all of that stuff and get to the thing you want to get to next and uh it's just not meaningful or impactful in in any way for me yeah I felt much more disconnected from the world here because oh, yeah. they made movement through it so much more trivial than before. Like, mm -hmm. I, I remember from Breath of the Wild, and to be fully fair, I don't know if they could have ever recaptured it, that sensation again uh, right. in the same way, but they didn't here either. But I remember, like, just seeing, like, you know, a tree off in the distance and, like, an NPC would call it out. I'm like, oh, man, that's my next objective. I want to go there. And, like, I have to trek across the world to get to work my way there. And here I would just build a rock. I'd throw a rocket on my shield, fly up, glide there. I'm like, well, that was easy you know and uh or build a bird thing 
and uh, or the winged Zona device, and it just yeah, it it, it 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 almost felt like a shortcut to the reward to what little rewards that there were already. Mm. And since the rewards already before were already borderline like not great, they feel even more trivial here, especially because they're the same rewards by and large. Like you know, ultimately you're powering up Link by increasing his stamina or. Uh, or his health, or you're finding like stuff to wear, or you're getting food. And all of that inherently is less valuable the more deeper into the game you are. And the fact that we've already done it before too, it's like, man, I'm just kind of tired. I'm over it, you know? Like I spent hundreds of hours in Breath of the Wild. I, I, so far I've only spent 130 hours of this. And we touched on this briefly before recording, but you were saying how when you finish the game, you felt no incentive to go back. And I felt the same too. Like by the time Jake, and maybe I'm getting off track here already from this complaint, but maybe this ties into it too. By the time I wanted to, by the time I was ready to finish the game, I was already over the game. And I think that's part of the issue too. Like I didn't really care anymore. I just wanted to get it over with. Oh, and, if I uh, if I didn't if I didn't work here, I would not have finished this game. I I was coming up on the last of the main four dungeons, and it was like pulling teeth. I I just did not want to do it. Well, all right. Well, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Yeah. That sounds like it yeah. could be its own complaint. So yeah. let's. Uh, I think you're up next for a complaint. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's what I've got for you. The introductory sequence walking talking with zelda that like they think they're the last of us for 10 seconds okay right. it's like you know totally. you even go you go through one of those little you know things uh promises something in the video game in the video game medium that to me is making a promise for the kind of video game you are going to get and they never even consider following up or delivering on that promise. It is the weirdest choice to make for the beginning of this game to be like, hey, you know what's different from Breath of the Wild? We care more about the story. Look at this cinematic touch. Look at how we're purposefully slowing you down to give you information because it matters. And then I never hear about that information again. And the information I do hear about, I get repeated in my face over and over and over again. And it is... Uh, it is symbolically, metaphorically meaningless. And all it boils down to is there's a bad guy. He's coming. We got to stop him. <laughs> See you at the end. So what is your specific complaint? My specific complaint is that they have this moment at the beginning of the game and it sets up a tone and a vibe and a... It doesn't deliver on and it the doesn't. It promise. doesn't... Not only does it not deliver, it is so incongruous to the rest of the game that I can't believe it's in here. What is this yeah. guided walking section at the beginning of the game where I'm getting a lore dump that ultimately doesn't matter? I find it to be an uninspired creative choice that uh, at worst, it, like saw five seconds of The Last of Us and was like, oh, let's do that without like understanding that's why the story was being told. And two, then they have the nerve to be like, we're telling a story this way, and then you get out into the world and you realize the memories are back, and they're telling the story out of order. Whole other right. complaint. And it complete I I feel okay, so overall my actual complaint. <laughs> That's a lot going now, on here, yeah, yeah, now that I've now that I've settled on it, I think my overall complaint is that this video game does not understand storytelling in a fundamental way. It does not okay. understand why you would tell a story out of order. It doesn't understand how to meaningfully tell a story in order, and I think the storytelling decision it makes are constantly undercut by the nature of its open world and the game so maybe i don't know i, I okay. you can take this in I, any direction I, you want yeah i think i jake i can distill this down to okay. what I, is one of my notes here the yeah. story is bad the story, the story is, bad. is bad in this game yeah, okay yeah. so i i okay so that opening of the game i i liked it i thought yeah. it was cool at the time in the yeah. moment I'm like this is neat Link didn't just wake up. This is like the first time ever we've seen that. Or, you know, one of the few times where Link doesn't just wake up. So that was cool. Felt different. I liked it. Yeah, it never follows up on that. It never delivers on that promise of what could be. In fact, it feels like the game forgets. Like, it's. I had this complaint with Breath of the Wild too. It feels even more pronounced here, by and large. Where the game, there's no narrative drive. Like, mm. it doesn't, nothing's compelling me to push me through this adventure. You know, I guess in spirit, uh, Ganondorf is, like, supposedly constantly powering up. But that only happens when you finally approach him at the end, where he goes from the weakling, or weak, weakling and he's all of a sudden is, like, you know, Super Saiyan or whatever it is. No, it is Super and, Saiyan. That is the correct yeah. term. That is, <laughs> and it's, it's just so <laughs> underwhelming. It's like, you could have just done this all this time, bro. Like, why do you wait until the moment I show up to finally become an, a, a seeming threat, even though he wasn't all that threatening, to be honest. So I heard a lot of people having issues with them. I'm like, dude, the guy's a pushover. Um, oh, yeah, me too. I heard that as well. People being like, this is like an Elden Ring boss. I was like, yeah, are you yeah. a baby? 
Are you? <laughs> like, I don't... So yeah, and then yeah. and then yeah, there, there's a lot of ways we can distill this. Um, yeah. You know the the fact that they have the, you know the four quadrant areas again. You need to go to the four regions, the four. Uh, what did they call it? The four foot phenomena, I believe, you had to deal with or whatever. Yes. This the key story point there is the same. It repeats it. They see Zelda do something. They they're like, that looks a little sus. It's a it's a Mario Sunshine story. Like, is that Mario sabotaging our town? And uh, we so you experience the same thing four times. By the end, we know you know we obviously know what's going on. And then adding to that, as you mentioned, is the out of order memories, which is a complaint I already had about the, about Breath of the Wild. They did not address it here at all. I thought they were initially because I happened to find yeah. the first one or two in sequence. I'm like, oh, they fixed it. Maybe whichever one you find first, you know, maybe it doesn't matter what order you find them in. It plays the memories in order. That's not the case. So you can end up undercutting the story by seeing what happens at the end well before you're supposed to. And uh, and then that's even, you know, after the whole point, like the fact that you're seeing the story that, that happened in the past, it just, it, for me, isn't interesting. I, I inherently almost hate flashbacks. I blame mm. Lost for this. I got so mm. tired of Lost flashbacks. It's like, it doesn't really, I don't really care. Like we're living in the result. I don't much care how it got to that point. There's more interesting ways of explaining this. And I still think it would have been better if those sequences were playable. Wait, you could play as Zelda during those. And then of course, uh, the Imprisoning War, Jake. It's the lamest thing ever. We've been hearing about the Imprisoning War for decades, and it's like five dudes standing around, or five people standing around against Ganondorf. Like, this is the lamest portrayal of this so-called war I could ever imagined. And I just didn't care. I didn't care about the story. There were no stakes, once again. No. no one in the world cares what's going on, like Breath of the Wild. I'm like, why do I care? Why do I care what's going on? Uh, it's a lazy, uninteresting contrivance. It is a, uh, we're in the past and we are fighting him. It's 10,000 years ago because that's the number we decided on. It right. is, uh, we are not strong enough to beat him now because we've decided that is our power level. You in the future are in fact strong enough to beat him now because your power, congratulations, you have Dragon Ball Z'd yourself and you are the strong enough level. Uh, everything that happens in the story is contrived. You go to that ending boss battle and it's like, oh, your your little guardian buddies, they cannot they cannot come with you. You, for some reason, are in a really big hurry to go fight Ganon. And then, like, at the moment where it would be most convenient, you know, the little bird goes, we're here! And I'm like, yeah, Thanks. Like I, you know, like I could have just waited five minutes, I guess, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, nothing is impactful. The the game would be more interesting if it took and uh, if it entirely took place ten thousand years ago. I feel. Uh, there, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. The I, any any time you walk up to somebody in this world, I find so this is like such a hard thing for me to put my finger on. But the the act of walking up to a character in Breath of the Wild and talking to them and seeing what they have to say, I found to be more interesting than that exact same exercise in this game. Where in this game, it was like, what do you remember from the last game? What are you are trying to say right now? What is our relationship? And it just felt like we were we were picking something at random to suit whatever point we wanted to get across and it just the things that mattered the things that didn't it just felt meaningless again and i i even from the very beginning link gets that new arm this kind of scary thing all of a sudden yeah. like link like lost his arm he's got this weirdo creature arm now and he's just kind of like all right <laughs> i guess that's me now <laughs> thank you for my video game powers and right. then he moves forward and like Sometimes other characters bring it up, but it's not ever like as big of a deal as, as it should be. And especially since I think people are going to fight me in the comments and they're going to be like, no, Jake, one of the deeper themes of this game is giving up your sacrificing your physical body to embody a sacred power. That, first off, is not a theme. Go back to school. <laughs> that is not just because it's a thing that happens. It's not it's got to be you got to have it's got to have a, a proclamation. There's no proclamation there. And um I, I just, it's for something that repeats in the story, something that I would call a motif. I feel that it is, again, meaningless. It happens again and again just to be like, oh yeah, because Zelda and Ganondorf and Link are connected and they're good and evil and they're balanced and they're, they're the same but different. But it doesn't, yeah, it's just, it's just nothing. Um, and I'm sure you're going to go here, but one of the biggest offenders here is obviously when you're doing every single dungeon and you, they have the nerve to make you sit through is that Zelda? Every time, yep. And then you get yeah, through that, and you get to the end, and they have the nerve to go, 
Here's my memory of the imprisoning war. Young, yep. young sat tree, young, whatever, young bird, young, you know, the exact same writing. It felt like I was ingesting Mad Libs. Could not believe how many points in this game I was mashing the A button, just begging to get through it. Man, I went to the uh, Zora region the first time, and I, I, in particular, hate the way they speak. For one, that whole chapter has a lot of talking, yeah. and the way they speak just made it even more aggravating for me to read. And I'm like, I'm just, I don't care, I don't care, I just want to get through this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 and you, you mentioned earlier, like, you found the NPCs not as engaging, I believe. Yeah. And I think part of it for me is... It, there's just so there's just too much like there's just it's almost overwhelming at points like and it made me care about all of it a little less i mean there's so mm. many npcs like there's a whole like uh side story side quest thing in uh uh Hateno village with the whole like uh mayor uh mayor yeah yeah election mm -hmm. and i i never went back to it i'm like i don't know i don't know about time i i don't want to get too invested in this i don't really care um and yeah the uh the regional stories just aren't that interesting. Like the Goron region, like where they're all like obsessed with rocks because they're possessed or cursed or whatever, but it doesn't amount to anything really, you know? And I think part of it too, Jake, is like, I didn't feel, you know, I had issues with the story, the story in Breath of the Wild too, but I think what it did have was better told where at least it felt like each region felt like it was building up to something, you know? Like they, they had the divine beasts and those are directly targeting uh, the castle, you know, and that weakens Ganondorf. And I thought that was kind of cool. And they also acted as like a constant reminder of your goal. You know, I think Pear on, I, uh, uh, Pear from IGN on Twitter was the one who may have brought this up. There's someone else did about how like the laser beams are always focused on Hyrule Castle. They're always reminding you, always mm. pointing you toward your goal. And so I, you know, it's, it's a subtle thing and maybe a subliminal thing, but I think it did help. It's like, it's always a persistent reminder of what the end game is. And Tears of the Kingdom doesn't have that. Like nothing really, again, seems tied together. You know, you go to each region, you get the spirit form of these champions, Ugh. which is also weird, Ugh. you know? <laughs> yeah, awful. Uh, I think I saw that tweet too. I think it was Brian Alt Altana, so shout oh, out. Oh, not even Brian. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. You. yeah it's from but um, yeah, it's it's funny. It's like that that this this it's it's making it so clear to me that I think in Breath of the Wild there was this beautiful marriage of you are a survivor and what you are doing in the game is surviving. And when right. you walk into a town, the thing that everybody's reacting to is that you survived. You are here, and you are going to change something here. And there's something that narrative thrust, I think, is actually powerful. And I felt embodied in that game. Whereas in this game, when you walk into a town, it's like, I didn't know what these people were going to say. Like, my best buddy. Hey, there's a big yeah. storm. Yeah, good point. Like, I had no reason to care what the NPCs were going to say. Because no. I, I, I didn't even myself... I was I wasn't invested in the story, no. so why do I care what these randos have to say to me? You know. Yeah, yeah, and and the again the contrivance of something uninteresting is going wrong in our town. It's essentially the same thing over and over again with like a with like a palette swap. Half the time it's the weather, half the time it's something that's basically right. the weather. And I and <laughs> I just and I just like to be totally honest, I kind of hate calling stuff out like this sometimes, but it feels like bad writing it feels like you couldn't come up with anything more interesting because, I, well, I, I i i i like write little scenarios in my head all the time where i'm like you could have used any of these towns as a way to tell us something about ganondorf that was cool like you know yeah please yeah i mean to yeah so to your point i mean mm -hmm. nintendo famously for better or worse i think depends on the game they operate on the gameplay first mantra and by and large i'm happy with that you know mm -hmm. but then you have instances like this where it feels like there should be more of a cohesive narrative and it completely drops the ball especially when they've had six years to work on and address the issues that were first raised in the first game and they they don't but then jake you also have examples where they've done as you've said with zelda itself like they've had good stories majora's mask had Heck amazing yeah. characters that mm. tied into the overall narrative and made you want to help them out. And you felt invested for their fate along with the overall fate of the world. And and they have not, you know, they were not able to accomplish that in Breath of the Wild and even more so with Tears of the Kingdom, where it, everything just feels so, so separated. And I think that kind of speaks to, actually, I don't know, do you have more to say about the story for now? Or? Well, yeah, I just think what, okay. what, you're, what you're highlighting for me is that the... So, like, Ganondorf and what is going wrong in each of these regions feel the connection between them is frail at best. Yes, and yeah. and it almost, to me, playing the game, it actually felt like Ganondorf disturbed the world, and then it was just kind of like the ripple effect. 
it was like, oh, so now these people have to deal with this thing. And it wasn't him actively making the world this way. And maybe, and maybe that's actually what they were going for. But I just keep playing in my head, like, how cool it would have been if it felt like as you were helping out these parts of the world you were taking you you were defeating him in, in little right. ways you were well, making Breath progress the against did that. Him. yeah exactly and i and i just or or even just use it as a way to tell us something about ganondorf i think about this all the time the the gorons that were eating the stupid rocks that made them dummies the like i have this cutscene in my head of, you could have done this with any of the regions of like Ganondorf, all hot, showing up to in, in one of these regions, taking one of the leaders, taking Yunobo, getting his ear, and have him with his weird little mouth, with his cool Matt Mercer voice actor, whisper something in, in the Goron's ear. And it's like magic. And he hears this, and it like gets in his head. And now all of a sudden, this Goron is doing things in the town that benefit Ganondorf. He is right. like actively producing things that are helping his overall mission. And then you stop that. Now you feel like I'm I'm fighting Ganondorf and his whole thing this whole time. But instead, it's just like, oh, okay, you guys are dealing with a natural disaster. Right, I have yeah. saved you. Now I'll go to the next one. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that I think that's a, a wonderful point. Again, it just speaks to how like un you know again for like a better word uncohesive this game really mm -hmm. is like in that nothing really ties together with anything else whether story or even gameplay wise and as it applies to larger gameplay loops um at least to a degree that i found to be satisfying mm -hmm. and I, I again i had this problem with breath of the wild but it feels even more pronounced here especially now that we've lost the novelty of exploring a giant world for the first time um it, yeah the, the the story there's just not a good well, story and or, or story drive, you know, like I need to go do this thing because I'm Link. That's what he does, okay. Mm. But like, I don't feel myself as a player why I need to go out of my way, especially because they really do make it feel like you're going out of your way to go finish this game, you know. Yeah. Like, you know what's funny? I didn't even, I completely even make the connection. I was doing the uh, Hyrule Castle stuff, you know, where you see Zelda apparitions throughout, and I forget how that even ends. But then I reached a point where I was supposed to go do. You're supposed you're, at some point you're supposed to go find the fifth shrine, but I'd already done that, so that un, that kind of like undermined that part of the story. But then around then I was supposed to go to Gerudo Valley or not Gerudo, sorry, uh, the Rito region to find something there, and I did, and I couldn't find the thing I was looking for. But then my friend who was over, he's like, dude, you can just go into the hole underneath the castle. I'm like, of course, why didn't I think of that? Of course, I just go in the hole and beat the game, you know. Now, and so that's why I did, and it just it just felt so <laughs> underwhelming because again, like this guy wasn't this guy wasn't a threat. Gandorf was not a threat until I showed up at his front freaking door, you know, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, now I'm a threat, you know. And and I, I think that's what they need. Like that's partially why I love Endora's Mask so much because there was this ever present threat. You always had the mm. moon looming overhead, and you had that time limit. Now I don't think you necessarily need a time limit. I wouldn't mind one. I'm one of the few people who like time limits in games when it's applied narratively and mechanically. Um, but they, I, I I never feel that here. Like as you said, like each region's their issues are largely of their own. You know, it's Ganondorf's influence is minimal. Like, if Ganondorf were actively doing something to affect these regions, and I think it actually would be cool if there were, like, a gameplay reason for it, or if it tied in gameplay, too. Like, maybe, for instance, you know, if you don't go help out a region, the enemy forces are going to get stronger and stronger, you know? And the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be for you to eventually get there. You know, for, for there to be some actual impact to what you're doing, for that to actually influence the world. Like, one thing I hate, Jake, mm. is the blood moon. Because it just feels like it, un it undoes everything I did. It's like, why did I do anything? It's all it's all back, you know? In, and in this game in particular, it felt like the, uh, the video game mechanic was simply... I felt it more. I felt the, the need to reload. I was like, oh, it's happening. I've tr I've progressed too far. Right. The blood moon is happening. Yeah, it didn't it didn't feel like Ganondorf's presence. It didn't feel like a threat. It just felt like I uh, we I uh, got to reload. Sorry, that guy you just beat, he's back. It wasn't hard. You can beat him again. Enjoy. You know. <laughs> uh yeah, let's let's since we kind of got there, let's let's turn this corner by that final boss fight. Um I keep trying to convince myself I liked this more than I did because I'm just trying not to be negative but I guess I just didn't like it and I I think so much of it is like you press the power up button so many times in a row that I just can't buy in and the use of dragons in this game I find to be wholly ineffective I I, I agree I feel that this game is like a, a kid ran up and said you know what's cool dragons 
And that's <laughs> as far as the idea went. <laughs> and because it's so weird how, like, the... For some reason, the dragon is more powerful than Ganondorf, just because that's, I guess, the power structure of this world. So a dragon is a bigger threat than he was on the ground, though the ultimate threat continues to be us in human form. So I'm not, so already I'm like a little bit confused there. But something I really liked about Breath of the Wild was um, when you found the memories, I, I thought there was kind of like a salient idea, the idea there of stepping into somebody else's memory and what mm. that's like and what you get out of that and why you're doing it and for the memories this time around to be like oh you get them by going to the pools of dragon tears right no <laughs> like no i reject that it just is so meaningless it's so like oh well she you know turned into a dragon and her tears carry her memories <laughs> I, yeah uh, so we're hitting on a few points here to that specific point jake i think you know i i I liked the idea in theory of like, you know, I, I, I did find, I forget what point it was exactly. I did find myself slightly touched. You know, I think it's a moment when she actually swallows the, the mm -hmm. what, secret stone? Is it what they called it? The sure. dumb name? Yeah. And she turns into a dragon. I'm like, okay, that's kind of cute. Like the sacrifice she's making. Mm -hmm. But it never felt, uh, again, it, did, it didn't hit as hard as I feel like it could have. Because through all these memories and flashbacks and things, which already don't really do a whole lot i i, I never felt like that that time gap you know there's, this, right. there's a supposed time gap and i never felt it because like mm. past hyrule by and large looks the same as modern hyrule it's not a whole lot that's different yeah. uh like you only meet a handful of characters you know and i will say i did like i actually did like the the two past dudes a king and queen whatever their names were oh Ra yeah raru and sonia yeah, I actually yeah. liked them. I thought they were cool. I wish they had a bigger presence in the game. Yeah. But again, like, I never felt like, you know, I, I think, I don't know why this is coming to mind right now, but like in a movie like, uh, uh, what's that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where he's, he's like in a dream or like, is he in a dream? Is he not? Uh, oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about, but yeah. I yeah, know yeah. everyone knows what I'm talking about. I can't think of the yeah, name. What is it? Oh, uh, God. Anyways, yeah. there's a point where they come across like, an, you know, like ancient ruins, like millions of years old. And you feel that. Like, I feel that they're millions, uh, millions of years old. But here I'm like, man, this story feels like it took place yesterday. You know, like, yeah. that, so the, the gap for Zelda as a dragon doesn't feel impactful, but I never really felt that span there. Total and, recall. Like, Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Ironically, that we lack the total recall yeah. for it. Uh, I'm well, glad recall, I'm glad Andre. It. Recall. It's in the game. <laughs> oh, even... that's right. It's actually an ability. Yes, yeah. of course. Which we'll have to get. We'll have to touch on those in a little bit here. Um, God, where the hell is I going with this? But uh, I'm going to cut to the gameplay part. Yeah. The final battle. You know, the first part's fine, I guess. Yeah. I thought there have been better Gandor fights before. I still think Ocarina is one of the better ones. Mm. And then even uh, I love Skyward Sword revisiting HD. It wasn't Gandorf, you know, demise. Yeah. I I think that final battle sequence is amazing still. Mm -hmm. Here we're battling him initially, like, you know, in the dark, underground, ugly ass cave. Yeah. And then you had the part where he does turn into dragon, and that seems cool initially. I, I initially I'm like, oh my god, we're gonna be we're we're having a dragon fight. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is gonna be sick. Where it's gonna like use your knowledge of like, you know, taming horses, you know, or riding beasts around, where we can finally ride this dragon, like, we're gonna fight this thing. A little bit like uh, you know, maybe like the Splatoon 3 fight, you know, where you're like, you know, you got the whole area aerial space thing it's all it seems cool but then you're like just riding air gusts around and to land on him he's not doing anything you're so like oh are we gonna him. have to use ultra hand the ability that this whole game insists that we use to fight to, to in this final battle or are we gonna use ultra oh no no okay no, no. ultra hand no boss fights really do, Jake, but no. that's that's another separate point. But yeah. yes, anyway, let's, let's stay focused on the ending yeah. sequence here. I I don't know. It was underwhelming. Like it was cool. It was cool. Like flying around. It was neat. But Jake, it speaks to another issue I had from Breath of the Wild that I did not address here. It doesn't make use of the world. It doesn't. And as you touched on, it doesn't make use of really anything distinct about this game. All it's doing is using the airspace that already existed, yep. and that's it. You know, and it looks cool visually, but that's it. It mechanically is not doing anything new or novel. Every single thing in this game that's cool, every single one has the exact same level of, of cool removed from context. You right, look at yeah. it on its own, and that is exactly what it is. Nothing else in the game ever builds up to anything. There's no connective tissue. There's no building of a theme. There's no emotional buildup. Nothing. It is, you watch that scene, you know exactly what it is, and that's how you think turning into a dragon is cool. Great. That's all there is to it. That's what you, yeah. It's so ironic, Jake, that you, the word you kept using, like, you know, that nothing's building up here is yeah. so ironic for a game almost entirely based around building. They oh. made this its main focus. Ultra Hand is the kind of key new mechanic here. 
And I think, should we move on for story for now? Is yeah, that, yeah, okay? I, I feel okay. we're really hitting so, our stride yeah. right now. Well, I think we are. <laughs> so I have two like interlinked issues here, yeah. Jake. I touched on one earlier. This game has no idea whether it's a game or a sandbox. Like yeah. it gives you all these tools, mm -hmm. but the game doesn't really motivate you to use them all that often. I mean, you are using, the, the, aside from the shrines, I never really felt driven to make cool stuff. And uh, and and the, the systems that make it work as a sandbox are opposed by the systems that make it work a game. And again, that's part of the why I think it feels uncohesive, you know? Because this is the two the two parts of this game are at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. With each other, you got the game, you got the sandbox, and you know we've seen a lot of people embrace the sandbox part, but you're then you're limited by the game portion where you have to manually go around, you slowly increase your battery by digging underground, going into the sky, you know, expanding it with the the Android thing, and then uh, then you have to go to the gumball machines, look for the parts you need, and it's all it's all working against each other. And I don't think they are elegant systems. Like, I, I fell into the RPG trap, Jake, where I didn't want to use my zone eye pieces because I have a limited quantity of them. Yeah. And so that prevented me from building cool stuff. But then the game's inherent design didn't motivate, motivate me to do it much anyway. Like, once I had a flying contraption, that's really all I needed. The game never made me felt compelled to build outside a handful of instances, especially in shrines. I never felt compelled to make the most of Ultra Hand. And that sucks because, to the game's credit, to the developer's credit, Ultra Hand as a mechanic is amazing. That is so freaking cool. Being able to, like, glue random crap together, yeah. have it function yeah amazing mm. the game does not embrace its own system now i'm so happy that some people out there are able to like they have a different mindset from me they're able to like have a ton of fun you know build like a little store around ganondorf and trap them i love that they're embracing it for me i need a reason to get creative i need a reason like something that compels me to make that cool stuff to deliver the result that i wanted that the game's looking for because the game doesn't care the game doesn't care at all and for some they love that. That's great. The game expects nothing of you. You can do whatever you want. Breath of the Wild explored that too, of course. But this game almost goes overboard for me. And I, people are gonna hate me for this, Jake. Okay. But I've, I've commented. I made this comparison before. I'll, you know, it seems like the, the, uh, some of this game's roots, are came from you know nuts and bolts mm -hmm. like where you are you you get different pieces you combine them together make cool vehicles you have like this ultra hand like device that can like magically put stuff together yeah and that is a game that much better delivered on that promise that was a game wholly built around ultra hand its version of ultra hand like it gave you it's like hey you need to go do this how you do it up to you but you need to do something crazy to pull it off and i love that this game like you have all these like koroks around i can walk them to their friend yes, most yes, of the time and that is the exact problem it is that they give you a million tools to solve incredibly easy problems and mm -hmm. it's and there is never anything in this game where it goes you could not have done this unless you were really creative every <laughs> almost every problem in this game can be solved with a surplus of shields uh shields and uh rockets like right. that and and that is so same exact thing with fusing weapons by the way it is yeah it's it's just slowing you down to get you to a solution that I think is ultimately not that interesting. And whereas, like, in Breath of the Wild, see, earlier you brought up, like, seeing a tree off in the distance. Maybe somebody comments on it, and it's like, oh, man, I'm going to go see what's going on in that tree. And I felt like playing that game, what was there was always kind of interesting. And maybe right, I yeah. accidentally found some interesting things on the way there. And this game does not care about the end result, and instead, like, you're going to have so much fun getting there. And, right. and I... Don't, and I can't really say outside of the first several times I, you know, you experiment agree, with different yeah. parts, which, That's which, cool. yeah. But the, but the fact is, is that I feel like controlling all of the vehicles feels kind of the same. It's not that interesting. There's not, and um, while you can get really involved and build these like multi-layered systems and these crazy machines and stuff, at the end of the day, it all functions very similarly. And it's just, are you are you going laterally or are you going up and down? Are you what are what are the weapons attached to it? And everything else is just kind of for show. So I I yeah and, yeah. and yeah yeah that's it yeah that's it yeah yeah no I mean I I yeah I, yeah. I fully agree with all of that like it just it, it the game didn't challenge me enough it no. didn't it, it it was never like hey this is something that's going to need some uh, some cleverness on your part to figure it out outside of the shrines again. Um, which did have some clever moments, uh, but the, the world exploration is more the part that I personally uh, enjoy, especially mm -hmm. because we've, you know, we've done shrines already in Breath of the Wild. The ones here are arguably better. 
Um, but yeah, mm. it, it just it feels like the game wasn't confident enough in its own systems to like, or, or maybe not confident enough in its, in its own players, where they're like, you know, I don't know if they can figure this out or not. So do whatever, it doesn't matter because you can accomplish it any number of ways. So like, I see people building cool stuff and I'm like, you know, I wish I felt motivated enough to do that because mm. I can just go in there, whack him with my stick. You know, I've got my, you know, I've got a whole freaking uh, uh, army with me at this point and they can all just like, take down everyone without with minimal help for myself even you know yeah. uh, with all the spirits around me and it sucks jake it's, it's such a good system and that's why i feel like this game is torn between what it is because i feel like i wanted a game that either better embraced those systems mm -hmm. like to give me more encouragement or i just wish they had just gone off the deep end fully and just make mm -hmm. it a full sandbox experience like just let me play around with no limits you know and let me share my creations with others online let me download other people's stuff and I, we can play around together you know there's no way to share blueprints uh easily and that sucks and i feel like i, I feel like this could be a better game had it not been a zelda game and i felt like they were held back by that like the Ooh. fact <laughs> yes Correct. Thank you. I hate. Yeah. I, yes, you're right. There's man. Cause you started talking there, <laughs> and I was like, whoa. The second you introduce multiplayer into this game, it makes more sense. It totally does, right? Yeah. And this, the second it's about screwing around with your friends, it's like, oh man, I understand this video game now. It's yeah. yeah. It's it's funny. It is married to so many Zelda things in a way where it's like, no, we promise it's for this. Even the shrines, the shrines, which like. On one level, I'm like, surely these shrines have to be better because you you they have to be like, and I and I'm like fighting myself in my brain to say that, but at the same time, it does kind of feel like so many of the shrines are here's a puzzle, here are your pieces, put them together, and right. whereas in the in the last game, I don't know, but maybe it's just a result of of a little too much been there done that. So I'm I don't feel particularly strongly that the that the the shrines here are way better and I think the big thing that I'm like fighting myself on with this entire conversation about Ultra Hand is that I am aware and impressed by how technically impressive it is. Yeah, and absolutely. It works every time. It's amazing. And, yeah, and and the way that they even have I even like shake to detach. I find that humorous. And yeah, like stupid things like that. Like it is well done, but it's like I'm, I almost am, am hoping this will appear in a different video game. It's like just, yeah. just wholesale take it's, this and put it in something I care more. Yeah, I don't know. It's too good just for Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, it's such yeah. a good mechanic that it will be a waste to not make better use of it, or at least additional use of it, of it elsewhere. And yeah, I, I don't know what happened here. Like, did they get so hung up on it working mechanically that they weren't able to structure the rest of the game around it to better support it? You know, and I, I realized fully, like, I we may be alone on this, Jake. Oh, Maybe God. no one else feels as we do. Because clearly a lot of people are having a blast of the game. I had fun with it, too. Yeah. But I, I feel like it didn't, it, it just didn't really push me to fully embrace its own systems and as a re and that's partially because of the lack of rewards the lack of incentives and uh and yeah i just feel like there's so much more potential here than what they did and, and i think part of it too is i mean i've already touched on this is it's held back by its own by its own design mm. so I, I hate the gumball the whole e gumball sure. like yeah. thing you know like the fact also like <laughs> Oh my god, this is this tiny another issue with my with the UI I have. Yeah. But the map becomes increasingly less useful the deeper in you are. There's so many freaking icons of that thing. There's no way to filter them out. And then by the end of the game, if you need a particular part, you need to literally highlight every freaking gumball machine. See oh if the my god, see you're if it has right. the things you need. Fly there. Like put in the things you need, the uh, the energy spheres or whatever. Hope you get the part you need, which right. you usually do, and then repeat for anything else you need. And I hate that. I think that should have been way streamlined. Like it should have been like literally the things you find you mine is a single material you then craft in the parts you need. Each one has maybe a different value. That's it. Like why aren't those the blueprints? Like those should be the blueprints. You craft the things you need whenever you need them. That way you're not limited on your inventory. It encourages uh, uh, you to. Uh, uh, be more freely creative because they're not limited by having a certain amount of one thing or not. And then also, don't be afraid to challenge us. Give us more things in the world that, like, hey, for this, you're going to need some kind of crazy digging machine or something. Some kind of crazy, I don't know, bouncy thing, thing that bounces around or some kind of offensive-based mm -hmm. flying machine. Actually, Jake, one of my favorite parts, actually, I really enjoyed was when we, uh, during Death Mountain, 
uh, before the temple part, I think, there's like this creature that comes out of it, this yeah. giant worm or something. Mm -hmm. I forget what it is. Oh, and yeah, that was fun. Yes. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. It was 30 seconds long, Jake. It was 30 <laughs> seconds long. You're like, it's like, oh, this is kind of like Star Fox. I'm flying around shooting yeah, it. And yeah. that's the only time in the game you need to do that. Because there's no other, there's really no other like aerial creatures. You don't need to have aerial battles with anything else. That's how maybe the dragons. And uh, yeah. It, Whoa, it, it, <laughs> that's cr I forgot about that because it is so short. But you're right, yeah. that was hype. It like it like felt like you were stepping into a different video game for a second. It and, did, yeah, I like and that. It, it really created something cool. Um, I yeah, and I think what a lot of this is illustrating to me too is it's 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 again I think capitalizing that point of the contrivances. The the gumball machines are hilarious because it's like just give them a way to get stuff, make it random. You know, right. and it's like it's like oh, you need to fly some somewhere. Oh, thank God, there's that that exact same glider that is everywhere when I need to fly. <laughs> thank God. Yeah. Oh, and the fans are there, there. Right. You know, and yeah. th that happens so often. And I think like now, kind of tying this into the fuse ability with the weapon stuff, um, using the same solution to solve all your problems is something yep. that this game needs to seriously think about i was i was so before we we spoke i of course like created a, a big thing of notes and one of the things i wanted to talk about was that the enemy variety still sucks and i think that people have convinced themselves because there are so many new enemies in this game that it's better but it's not First off, when you have as much extra ground as you do in this game, to have as few new enemies as you have, it's not enough. That's the first thing. But the second thing is, you fight all of these enemies the exact same way. So let's go through the list. Uh, <sighs> there are Horriblins. Horriblins, you know what they do? They crawl around on the ceilings. So you have to shoot them with an arrow to get them down. That's one. Uh, like Likes. You have to wait for them to open their mouths and then shoot them with an arrow in the mouth. That's two. Uh, flying enemies that can carry bacoblins, they die after you shoot them with an arrow. One arrow. One arrow. That's, okay, that's three. Uh, the hand monsters. The best way to fight them is to get into a position where they can't get you and shoot them with arrows. That's four. The re-dead Gibdo thingies that you have to, you have to shoot them with an arrow to activate Riju's lightning ability. That's five. Uh, the, the, there you go. That's enough. I, but yeah. like, uh, but yeah, it's just, I'm just doing the same thing. Enemies or bosses or even the temples in this game really encourage you to, or even demand at, or even offer the ability to build an ultra hand device to take it on, you know? Like, that's why, again, I circle back to the Death Mountain thing. But that's one of the few times in the game where you do so, even though they give you the exact part, they even tell, they strip, give you the thing you need to do to take it on. But like, I feel like that would have been cool. Like, whether there were bigger enemies or bigger bosses, like, that you didn't didn't have to fight the same way every time as we already did in Breath of the Wild too. Now, obviously, I know you can in some instances. We've seen people make like mechs and take on like the rock creatures, but I never felt the need to, especially because I see it takes so long to build something. It's faster just to do it any other way than you would normally, you know. But I wish the game had done that. Like, what if there was a boss that's like, hey. You need to build something here. Mm. And you touched on this earlier, Jake, where I, I think mm. you said something to the effect of, like, they, they, yeah, they, they needed to give us more reason to fight these enemies in different ways. And, I, I, you know, I'm not a game designer, obviously, but, like, one loose idea I have is, like, what if each region in the game, for whatever reason, you can only use certain Zonai parts, at least initially. So it forces mm. you to use these different Zonai pieces in creative ways, so you can't just default back to the same thing that worked everywhere else, also because you have those parts available, because they're everywhere. Because, like, those bird wing things are literally everywhere uh i think that could have been interesting where maybe you it does compel you to actually try something new uh, yeah then in the end game you have to combine everything yes yes exactly why was ganondorf not something like why did he not have his own crazy ultra hand contraption the only oh my that, god right <laughs> like, oh just, like god. everything everything exists in a vacuum in this game jake everything oh. exists in a vacuum nothing ties together the only thing the only characters that use anything akin to that are are the yiga clan and that yeah. that should have been your gimmick like a yiga clan should have uh that should like forget the yiga clan that should have been with the bosses how they exist like the the coolest thing actually i think jake that we've seen that's at all similar are those uh blocky creatures in the sky you know those uh you know, the flux. The, the flux, uh, yes. Yeah, those were cool. Yeah. I actually like those battles, even if you didn't have to create anything yourself to fight them. Those were cool, and I think showed so much more potential for how the rest of the game should have worked. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, I figured out how to beat them way too quickly. 
So the entire game, I was just like, oh, damn. They just, just pull it off. <laughs> pull it off, yeah. Stupid thing. yeah. But yeah, I feel yeah. like, they, they, I, I will say to the game's cry, they mixed it up enough that I never, that I didn't feel, I felt like that was the least of the game's issues. Because, like, they would yeah. try to bury it. You'd have to dig it out. You'd have to use a sand to get up to it. You'd have to reverse time. We even, we barely even talked about the abilities, by the way. Um, because it, well, I will well, say. So really quick, the weird thing yeah. with the flux is that his whole thing is that he can reshape his body. But every flux is in the same humanoid shape. How yeah, dare you? That's true. Yeah, like, are just, you serious? Like, it should be yeah, different shapes. Yeah, that would have yeah. been cool. Yeah. You know, the more we talk about this, I, I feel like the game is almost trying to be too ambitious. They have all mm. these amazing systems packed in with two, basically, what's effectively two additional worlds on top of this already massive world that we have that returns to Breath of the Wild, albeit modified. And I think they, fo they, they lost focus. They lost focus. I would have mm. been happy... Ditch the sky by and large, or I mean, keep it as an explorable space. We don't need all the islands. Definitely ditch the depths. We do absolutely do not need those, unless in a much more smaller, uh, c constrained area. I wish they had just taken all the reference and focused it back in the world. Like I love the systems, the new abilities. I think they're better than the abilities we have in Breath of the Wild. They're mm -hmm. more interesting to use. Like the ice power in Breath of the Wild is borderline useless and boring to use. Yeah. The ones here, they they actually, and to the game's credit, they interface well with, with each other. Like Recall mm -hmm. is genius with, um, you know, the uh, Ultra Hand and uh, even Ascend kind of makes sense with how everything is laid out. And then, uh, f actually Fuse is the one I could lose. I don't care about Fuse really. Um, especially yeah. combined with the interface where it just makes it painful to use, to merge uh, the arrows in particular. In any case, I wish they had just focused on the world again, create new obstacles and new reasons to really fully embrace the Ultra Hand abilities and the parts that they enable. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, th I think now, in a lot of ways, us doing this video has been my quest for meaning in Tears of the Kingdom, <laughs> and I'm trying to, and, and I think the, the more we talk about it, the more I'm realizing is that Breath of the Wild was a pizza, and Tears of the Kingdom, they just had years, they had unlimited time and unlimited money to put as many toppings as possible on the pizza, and now I'm bringing it over to somebody, and they're going, wow, this looks great. You figure it out. What is yeah. it? It's yeah, a pizza. Exactly. And I go, it's a pizza, and they go, no, it's not. And I go, no, I swear, there's a pizza under there. And everybody's looking at me going, but Jake, why don't you like it? It's more. Right. And I, you know, and I, yeah, so that I think that is becoming clear to me. And um, it's funny, looking at my list, there are still, I can't believe this, so many things <laughs> that we have yet to talk about that yeah, I still there's... found unimaginably dumb. The And one I just, I have to bring up, just because I need to get this off my chest, the summons really the the, the guys the your, your buddies yeah the spirits yeah i hate yeah. them i ah whose idea was it to say you know how we're going to activate this ability you're going to go over to him and you're going to talk to him <laughs> and you're going to press the a button and that's how you're going to activate the ability but also the fact that there are these glowing green little spirit dudes that are hanging out with you and you have to deal with this dumb animation of them like going back to your ring and then coming out every time right. you climb something or whatever. It's, it, would it have been so awful if it was just the actual character hanging with you the whole time? Would that, would that have been so unreasonable? The only reason I, I, Jake, I've questioned this myself as well. Okay. The only reason I can think for this is simply so they can justify the character is like, you know, turning the operations and reappearing elsewhere, right? Like that's their contextual reason so they don't have to fake it with, you know, them just, you know, so it makes sense contextually. I don't think it matters. I agree. Like having them as these like, uh, having them as just purely like these seemingly emotionless spirits made them feel it was just weird. It was just weird having them with me. And then it also, like, it, it did chip away, too, at a feeling I did enjoy from Breath of the Wild, which was that sense of isolation, you know? Like, I mm. felt like I'm on this journey by myself, you know? Mm. And I've got to figure it out. But having, like, a constant companion, and yes, I know you can turn them off, but you don't want to because you basically do need their abilities oftentimes, especially the flying guys, the bird, whatever. Um, and but, yeah, but, it, but, it, the, the, and, but the thing about that is that what's funny to me is that in Breath of the Wild, you gain abilities. They are right. your abilities. Yep. And in this game, they tell you that you're your, that they're your abilities, but, but they're, they're not. not. Yeah, and they're the not. weird thing is, is that they also tell you that the character is unlocking a new like level of ability for themselves, but they're not. Yeah. 
No. Like, it, none I, of it makes any sense. And, it, it, and, it, yeah, yeah. And then the interface, as you said, is bad. The interface no, for them bad. is bad, yeah, and it gets bad. worse the more than you have. Because you, yeah. for one, I went to the Gerudo region first, and she, or sorry, last, and she's the smallest character of all, which yeah. meant all the others are getting my way constantly. I was activating their powers when they didn't want to, and that often had a, uh, a detrimental effect. Uh, yep. For instance, the uh, bird guy, I, you know how many times I blew away freaking Zonite that I wanted? Yep, me too. Yeah, yep. Uh, yep, it's so annoying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's just bad. You have to like chase them down because they're not off, they're not always with you. Sometimes for arbitrary reasons, like where in the hell does she go? Where is she? You know, especially because she's the only one, the the you know Gorilla Girl, who I think like tries to like take the terrain as much as possible. Like she she seems to be less willing to like just materialize elsewhere. I don't know. Maybe I'm making that up. But the yeah. it's just a bad interface where you can't consistently rely on them. And I can't believe that's the solution they arrived to. And and that combined with my other UI issues, it's just so baffling to me that after six years, this is what they arrived at. Like, Jake, I, I mentioned it before. I have to dive in on this a little bit more. No, please. The, the Arrow Fuse interface is so freaking terrible. Yeah. A game that encourages you to use anything, to combine anything with it, makes you slowly pan through this list chronologically that you can only sort in a handful of ways. I don't know how they thought that was a good idea. Why not at the least have maybe multiple rows? Jake, a Berlin interface I would I have thought before would be I mentioned on Twitter would be the one from from Beyond Good and Evil also reused in uh in uh uh what's it called There's another game that used it I can't Dishonored. remember Dishonored No oh Dishonored there's another game too but yes Dishonored as well has this brilliant radial menu that comes yes. out uh, around your character, you it's analog, so you rotate the control stick, allows you fly it through that thing in moments, easily select whichever one you want, and you would look, it would fit so well with the whole, uh, the, the whole, um, uh, Zonai look they already have, you know, and I can't believe that they defaulted back to that terrible same list they had from Breath of the Wild. And, it, and it, Jake, the effect for me, it ended up happening was, I would just use the same handful of items over and over and over, but I didn't care. Yeah. Of course, of course, that's what happened to everybody. And and granted, I will say on the, to defend this a little bit, nothing you're attaching to your arrows is that interesting. <laughs> so it's the game wants you to think that because right. they go look at your list of 200 options, 187 of them do nothing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they oh, did, I'm not yeah. gonna know. But I didn't try most of them. So and I mean, but same thing with like attaching stuff to your weapons to like make them stronger. I it's, didn't care. It's, I, I didn't care. Yeah, it's none I, of I did it. it. I did it purely because, you know, they, they've effectively forced you to by making every weapon yeah. weak as hell this time. Uh, it, which they justified because the uprising caused all the, the, the thing, it somehow, whatever, you know, somehow the uprisings effects were able to identify weapons and then they made them weak, you know, and contrivance, <laughs> contrivance alert. And, yep. and it's all just numbers. Like none of it made sense in my head. I would have to look at what a weapon was rated to know how strong it was. There was no like intuition about it. And Attaching stuff to your weapon 99% of the time did not change its function or utility. You still used the weapon the exact same way you would if it had nothing attached to it. And uh, there are still only three weapons in this game. There are normal swords, there are big heavy weapons, and there are spears. And that it, it, it's so, it's, it's yeah, it's just copy and paste. No, it. it's not I know we're going to get, Jake, yeah, I mean, you're that's definitely true. I know we're going to get comments yeah. being like, well, if you do this, if you combine this with that, it has this effect, which is crazy. Congrats. And yeah, yeah, like I know, like I know, I've seen some of them. They're cool, great. I didn't sure. feel incentivized to do it myself once again because the game doesn't really care what you do, which I think it should more to some degree. Mm -hmm. And also, even if it did, I I hated the interface so much. I used it as little as possible because it, and even even the quick select menu, Jake, it takes too long you know, for your abilities. It takes too long to appear. Uh, there's too many icons on it. I don't know. I just need the four. I don't need the map on there too. It's like they added that as filler. There's an amiibo icon for some reason. And uh, there's like some weird leg to it too. It just made using that menu annoying as well. I'm like, ah, you guys were so close to having a good interface, but you've missed the mark and I don't know. Well, um, and all of the fuse effects to any to anybody that's trying to fight me on this, I feel like all of the fuse effects are just effects that already existed in Breath of the Wild now applied to these weapons outside of maybe the puff shroom and the thing that makes people like dizzy or whatever, that, yeah, that, right. that, that little thing. Like, I think those are the two new things. But um, on that subject, this game has an abundance of copy and pasting elements from the last game without any sort of reinvention or way to recontextualize them in a new game that makes them interesting again. Uh, I'm talking about things like the weather, exactly the same. Uh, the stamina system, exactly the same. Cooking and climbing are exactly the same. Paragliding is exactly the same. 
And it's like if any of these things had a new wrinkle, a new layer, yeah. that would that would instantly make it more compelling. But because they're not, again, I get the sense of I'm just going through the motions in this game again. And they didn't have any good or creative ideas or ways to iterate on these systems. So what we end up with is more toppings on the pizza. Yeah, yeah. they just dumped a toy box into this world. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. hey, have fun with it. I, I, I think... You know, talking about this more, you've, you've said it just even mm. kind of now to an extent. Like, the, the, I had this issue again with Breath of the Wild that feels even more pronounced here because, as mm. you said, like, we're going through the motions again. It, Tears of the Kingdom is effectively a treadmill of mediocre rewards. Like, you just get, like, everything you do <laughs> awards you with something that you don't really even want at all. Yeah. And it exists purely to keep you going to the next meaningless reward. Mm. And there's a point in the game in which the systems, you know, like, once I got over the novelty of everything, I'm like, why am I doing anything now? Mm. And I can't just go finish the game. And that's why I did. I'm like, I'm, I'm bored. I want to go finish this. And yeah. I did. But I, by that point, I didn't really care at all about the story anymore. And, uh, and it just all felt very underwhelming, especially given the fact that once you do beat the game, there's no post-game or anything, which I don't know why Nintendo's so averse to these. Mario's had, I think even Mario may have done it. I, I think Paper Mario may have, I forget, whatever. Point is, Nintendo seems to be very adverse to these when this is the kind of game, uh, this is the kind of game that feels perfect for it, you know? Like, give us some post-game incentives beyond just or, or, or at all, even. I mean, give us... At all. Don't have the world... Let us revisit a world where the threat's been dealt with, we can see the ramifications it has on the world, and we can continue to do the rest as we want. But since I beat the game, I have not wanted to go back. I have mm -hmm. not gone back. I probably won't go back, at least anytime soon. Uh, it doesn't help that Link is so uninteresting and boring and meaningless that there is no, like you as the character of Link embody so little that you're not even like, I need to go back and see what the reaction is in there. Like there, there is no character that you are stepping into there. It is a, a fully player avatar real life. Like Link right. is so thin. Like, and and I and I know people. Are, that's going to be another thing that I. I oh yeah, people. Anticipate. People are going to take issue with it. I I agree. Like yes, okay. If you read every freaking log and book in the game, maybe I know Breath of the Wild like lampshaded his inability, his uh, unwillingness to speak. I think yeah. I forget how. And that was like a cheap, yeah, lampshade as I said. But th somehow this is so Link. Okay, you know, the, Link's name inherently has always been about oh, he's, it's a link between the player and the game. But right. even Nintendo in the past has recognized that Link is his own character. You know, mm. especially you could I think arguably climaxed with uh, Wind Waker, where they really went all in on giving him ex expressions and emotions. They made his face incredibly readable, so you mm. could as a player appreciate and understand what he's feeling in that moment. And mm. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, for whatever reason, have stepped away from that. Where like Link is barely his own character now again they have they there's some journals that lampshade this and you know try to flesh them out to every degree that they can which i wonder how much of that is just a localization desperately trying to fit something in um but yeah like link like he doesn't feel like a character he doesn't feel like a person he just feels like a blank slate and i i want more from him you know, yeah, I, I, and, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, please. And 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 if you're going to try and tell me that this is a more cinematic, more narratively focused Zelda game, and you have these stupid moments where I'm again walking through this underground area, going in between the crevices, and I'm hanging out with Zelda, and there's cutscenes and everything, it is, it is. I feel it is embarrassing to watch these cutscenes play out and for Link not to say anything. I feel that it is strange and awkward to have to sit through a conversation in which NPCs go back and forth going, do you think that was Zelda who we saw? And my stupid player character who refuses to speak can't just go, uh, no, actually. <laughs> like, like that, like it's right. actively holding yeah. the game back. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how we we seem to be more informed than Link himself. Yes! Is, though Link was there every step of the way. Yeah. And that is frustrating. It's like, no, I know that is not Zelda. Clearly, we know it's not. And it's uh it's it's just it's very annoying. Like, yeah. I it's it's just disappointing, you know, like the fact that I again I didn't care about the story, which makes me care about everything less to a degree. I mean myself, I've said before, I'm I'm more I'm definitely more of a gameplay focused person, but there are times when I definitely crave a deeper story, and I feel like 
Zelda is ripe for that, and they've done it before too. So I don't want I'm not discrediting the entire series. Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom absolutely themselves have stepped away from that when I feel like this is the time they should be embracing it more. And I understand that's it's not it's difficult in an open world game. And sadly, Nintendo has not cracked that nut yet. They have not figured out how to deliver a compelling story in an open world setting, and I feel like they can. I mean think others have. Nintendo hasn't, and I want them to do that. And you know, there's any number of ways they could already improve what they have. Uh uh, just with the systems that they've already that they're already working with then. Well, and media teaches you how to consume it. And I was having this this thought the other day where I was playing the, the demo for Pikmin 4. And I was like, why why am I so open to and so tickled by the dumb narrative elements in this game, yet I completely have friction with and resist Zelda? And I do think it's because what I've been saying of the way it tells you the kind of experience you're going to be getting. And I go, okay, if you're going to set me up for this kind of like serious cinematic narrative experience, then my expectations are in a certain place. And then- <laughs> right. To, you know, only deliver on that when you decide is the it's the right time to, and by that I mean the very, very beginning and the very, very end, then I'm going to be, I'm going to have a different reaction to it than I am, like, the sweet little idiots in Pikmin 4, just, like, running around going, whoa, this is crazy. Like, you know, so I, yeah, so it's just, it's, 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 they've got to decide what it is going to be, and I think a big thing that's going to be different for me and a lot of Zelda fans is that the fact that this is Zelda is not enough for me. The fact that this is the the coolest version of Ganondorf we've ever seen, that just, you know, again, removed from context, that cutscene of when he turns Super Saiyan is what people want to see, in a way. That's yeah. like when, when Ganondorf shows up in Smash Brothers, that's the version you want. Uh, and I think that a lot of those elements in, like, Zelda iconography are maybe better realized than they've ever been realized in this game. There's a lot of stuff that looks, I think, the way that you as a fan want it to look, but I, but I ultimately, it's, it's just not enough. It needs, I wish it were more. Yeah. 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 I, for, I forget what it is you said, but it reminded me mm. of a, another complaint I have and it ties, mm. again it goes back to Breath of the Wild but again it feels more pronounced here and that is like the game doesn't really do anything interesting with its large world like it is simply large for the sake of being large yeah. it doesn't do anything novel with that you're it, beyond the mere act of traveling from one place to another mm. and then doing whatever you want along the way and I think there's so much more potential there too and again it's something I was more willing more willing to overlook for Breath of the Wild because everything it was doing is by and large novel at least especially by the Zelda series standards <laughs> But this time, it's like, man, why, why, like, why can't we do more with this? Like, why aren't the enemies embracing this open world? Like, why isn't Ganondorf hopping around the world? I have to chase after him, you know, and battle him at different locations, you know? Like, that'd be cool. Maybe there's a time limit. Maybe I have to get there before he ruins a town or something, mm -hmm. you know? Like, some kind of pressure. And, uh, and maybe that could tie into a larger narrative point where, like, we actually see him powering up throughout the game, you know, like maybe after he beat each of the regional areas. Like, I don't know. Again, there's just that lack of cohesiveness that really drives me nuts, both in terms, both in a narrative sense and, uh, a mechanical sense like with again the shrines exist only to power up link and that stops to matter after a while i think it'd be cool if, like the shrines serve the grander purpose maybe i proposed this idea before not necessarily a great one but maybe like they act as like a a network and then you can like fence in like yeah it, it create like a barrier in the region that fences in ganondorf for instance or any enemy and it funnels them out i don't know i just think there's so much more they can do and and I, I, I respect what the developers did here with the systems that they created. But those systems, again, are amazing, but the game built around it doesn't fully support them. And this game doesn't, it doesn't do what I wanted in a sequel to Breath of the Wild. And that's so weird to say because it's, it's by and large the same game revisited with new crap piled in. It's like, this isn't what I wanted. I didn't want necessarily more of the same. I wanted to take the things that worked well in the game and continue in those directions in a more interesting way. And they didn't. What was your favorite dungeon? Yeah, we, we have talked about dungeons. Yeah, I'm just curious. The, the Gerudo one. Interesting. Okay. How are you? Uh, I think the Goron one. Okay, I can see that. I, I found that one confusing personally. Yeah. But I liked the ideas that were present there. Like, I, yeah. I thought they... And, and it actually encouraged use of, you know, uh, Ultra Hand using the uh, minecarts to go around and do things along the way. So Right. I think the Gerudo one is the most we're doing a Zelda dungeon. Yes, I, absolutely. That's, that's probably why I liked it. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I appreciate that that's there. And I appreciate that they were like, one of these is going to be that. Um, I think I liked the Goron one because to me, it felt the most like a... Um, 
it 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 felt the mo it felt the most special in a way. It I I really liked the minecart thing because it was like okay we're we I was not going to cheat. I was not going to just build things so that I could fly from thing to thing. Right. I wanted to sit there and I wanted to go okay how am I going to do this minecart thing? And it actually felt like a puzzle. I I don't think it's perfect. It's it's I was surprised how many times you got to the thing you needed to throw your Goron buddy at, and it was literally just like no that's all you need to do. There's no puzzle here. It's like congratulations you made it. Please throw throw your friend at this rock and uh and that was a little disappointing i think all of the bosses are bad um but i think that that's just me i think i just don't like zelda bosses because it's all i think this idea of there's a weak point use the ability that you know you're going to use throw your buddy at the at the weak point and move on to the next thing um but yeah i i don't know i i i I think like a big thing going into this game, I bring this up just because I think a big thing going into this game was this question of, can they deliver the dungeons that everybody wants? That especially, was especially, like, yeah. Especially because Nintendo randomly hyped them up like a, a few days yes. before release mm -hmm. in that interview that came from the developers. Yeah. Um, Sorry, did you have more you were going to... No, yeah, yeah, there? and I just think that that... And now I, I think that that question is almost like not as important as we maybe thought it was. And, uh, and I almost wonder if, like, I, I don't think anybody is going to take any of these dungeons and be like, one of these is even in the conversation for the top five Zelda dungeons of all time. Probably not. Yeah. Um, it's, it, I, I, you know, I'm, it's hard to say, but I have, some, since, I have seen some people that really like the dungeons here. I felt they were very uneven. I really didn't like the... Uh, the, sorry, the uh, Zora or the, that's the worst one. That's easily yeah, the worst. The Zora's, one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But also the Rito one is fairly similar in concept, where like mm -hmm. you just kind of like have a hub, they go off in different directions and try to activate the four things. Mm -hmm. I, I don't find that interesting. Some people no. seem to, but I, I, it's so weird because it, the Divine Beast just gets shed on constantly. I'm like, they were overall more interesting than the dungeons here. I, agree. I thought. Yeah, like, I mean, I thematically, I think it's cool just having this giant beast lumber around and the dungeon exists within them. But then mechanically, you have the fact that you they've done something that you've never had done in a Zelda game before, where each one has, like, this, this uh, thing you can interact with from any point in the dungeon, and it mm -hmm. affects the entire layout. That's awesome. That's so yeah. freaking cool. Um, and then while you're inside them, you can see the world, too, from them. And, you know, people are like, oh, the ones here look so much better. I'm like... Do they? Like, they were all kind of ugly to me, especially the the the, uh, the Goron one is just fully underground, which is already kind of like an ugly area anyway. Um, the rest of them didn't seem to be too, like, you were just indoors, which I think are the uglier environments anyway for Zelda. Uh, yeah. But, so yeah, I think they were uneven. So, I liked I liked half of them to a degree. I really liked the Gerudo one because it felt like conventional Zelda. But the first two, or the other two that I experienced were the first ones I went through. I'm like, my god, what are people talking about here? I thought, actually... It's funny, Jake, because the build-up to them, not only did I think they were more interesting, I especially thought they were more interesting, but I thought those were the temples. I thought yeah, the build-up right. to those, I'm like, oh, is this a temple? That's what they're talking about. That's cool. This is totally different. And then you end up at the temple, like, oh, it's just like a standard, kind of standard feeling thing, you know? Yeah, that's funny. Like, getting up to the Zora one is so much better than the stuff you do at the top. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I, I wonder, man, I might feel that way about all of them across the board, honestly. <laughs> That, that journey there. Yeah, because it, it also just felt like it was a smoother... So, so so what I think worked about the Breath of the Wild dungeons is that it's this game about being in this open world, and then now all of a sudden you're contained to this thing that is still very much in the open world, and there's right, an obvious yeah. contrast there, and I, and I think how they, they kind of play off of each other really works. And then in this game, they do this weird thing where it's like, okay, the Zora dungeon, it's up in the sky. Why not? <laughs> You know, and it's and that already, I'm like, oh, they put the fish people in the sky. How dare they? Like, I, it already feels like a contrivance just because some things need to be in the sky in this game. Uh, and it is secluded in a way that feels unnatural. The big boat that you're on for the Rito thing, that, that big boat that's up there, that's that dungeon, it's like, okay, you're surrounded by tornadoes that obscure your vision, which they use far too often in this game. Uh, I'm sick of having my vision obscured. Just let me see. <laughs> and uh and and every time it just it just felt like this thing that wasn't part of the game that they just like put in the game like they could they could put however many more or however many less in this game and you would never know because they're just like dropped in yeah right yeah all right
Yeah, no, I hear ya. Well, Jake, are there any other uh, key complaints we haven't addressed yet? <laughs> In case people uh, aren't sick of our complaints yet. Let's see. Side quests are just fine. Flurry Rush is broken. Healing in the pause menu is legit stupid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just because, yeah, there's there's no risk. You're never at, your inventory can't really fill up. You're you always have food on you by and large. Oh, I hate cooking. By the way, I hate cook. I hate cooking. I can't oh, deal with it. Yeah, it's yeah. just boring. It's just a, it just slows you down. It's a, it's waste time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, my problem with the healing and the pause menu is like there are ways to cheese this game that I see like Zelda people do all the time, and I'm like, how do you not feel bad about yourself? But like, obviously, you can run over to a, like the edge of a cliff, jump off, enter slow motion, hit things with arrows, and dominate every battle in this game. No question, you can win. But that at least you have to kind of go out of your way and play a certain way and have the ammunition, whatever. The healing thing, there is no scenario where I pause the game and heal myself or I don't feel like I'm getting away with something. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's there yeah there is no it's, natural implementation of it because there are no limitations. There right. it's it's not like like I feel like it'd be so easy to implement this system where it's like okay, Link can only carry this many meals on him. Yeah, yeah, then, no, I I agree. It, I then mean, you have to go cook more, you know? What about yeah? My favorite Metal Gear game is Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater because it did mm -hmm. such a great job of making you feel like you're basically in danger constantly. You had to worry about your survival. You couldn't cheese it. Not that I know of, at least not as easily as Breath of the Wild. But you had to constantly like, eat things, keep your stamina meter up, and it felt like and it made you feel more connected to the world, which, again, is something I think Breath of the Wild did better than Tears of the Kingdom. And, uh, yeah, here, again, this probably existed in Breath of the Wild, too, but it does feel even more pronounced here with Hilary and everything else. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it is quite easy just to cheese your way through a lot of it. Now, I will say, in the game's defense, like, mm. you mentioned there's no limits, and I do like how... I, I felt like I solved almost every shrine in a way, probably not the perfectly intended way. But what's cool, cool is I felt like that was also intended, you know? And mm -hmm. I think the shrines, I think the shrines in this game are the closest this game gets to fully embracing the systems it gives you. Like those mm -hmm. are the parts that felt like, hey, we know what this game is. Here's the tools you have, but you have fun. You figure it out. Here's a clear goal. You know, just do it however you want. That's cool. The rest of the game, the, the problems I have is I inherently don't like being indoors in Zelda games. So I kind of dread a little bit always going into a shrine so i wish they had embraced the mentality everywhere else but they don't you know like the closest mm -hmm. they get we touched on earlier are the korok friends who need to be reunited with their uh, with their other friend but you know those are easy to cheese as well like in any number of ways and, and it, uh, yeah yeah i this i think this is a good place to end on i got one for you what All is right. your what is your favorite part of this game <sighs> like a singular moment or anything or, whatever what comes anything. to mind what speaks to you as just the thing that brings you the most joy in this game. You're like, you know what? I, that lit me up. I mean, I, I, I think I would, I would fall back to Ultra Hand. I think Ultra Hand okay. is a really cool mechanic. I just wish there was a better game around it or a game mm -hmm. more supportive of it. But I think mechanically Ultra Hand is brilliant. You know, like the fact that you can literally just merge any crap together and you'll do something or you can do something with it. And, and the fact that it works at all, let alone on Switch, is amazing. Like, that's a system that'll be impressive on any system. The fact that guys that work on Switch, <laughs> incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. It, I would probably go Ultra Hand, but if I had to choose a singular moment as well, I'd probably go Enter in the Depths for the first time. That's the closest mm. the game came to giving me a sensation like hopping off the plateau in, uh, in mm. Breath of the Wild. So, that's cool. How about you? Uh, for me, it's got to be uh, helping the guy with his signs. I, you know. I it's, that, it'd be it'd be so easy for me to complain about it, but the truth is is that that feels like a small little puzzle that yep. doesn't have an immediately obvious this is the correct way to do it solution, and I always stopped not because I needed the reward the rewards were meaningless, yep. the but I always stopped because I just like the tickle of the brain i liked the little oh how am i going to it felt like a way that i was going to use ultra hand quickly cleanly and just like have a little fun and i enjoyed doing it i, I thought that was a fun side activity 
No, that is a perfect, I think that's a better example than the Koroks of something that challenges your knowledge of how the gameplay systems work. Mm. Now, I think I did reach a point where I was able to cheese him pretty easily. Yeah. But before I reached that point, I'm like, this is cool. Like, this is clearly a character that yeah. went into the game. He actually reminds, this is a weird comparison to make, but I'm going to make it anyway. Mm. Again, as a Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts had this character called Trophy Thomas, and every stage he'd challenge you to a race. And then every time you had to figure out some kind of new vehicle to make to keep up with him and beat him. And uh, this guy feels like the closest comparison to that. Like, it embraces the yeah. systems, it challenges you, and to fully make use of them. And I wish the game had more of that. Like, why does this game not actually have races? Like, I know it has the uh, Terrytown stuff, and maybe I haven't played far enough yet, but as far as I can tell, you don't actually ever race anyone there. And, like, why not? Like, I want to race people in their own contraptions. I have to figure out how to beat them with this limited pool of options available, you know? Yeah, it's it's extremely weird that there's not, like, a guy in a car roaming the open world <laughs> challenging you to race it. Like, extremely weird. It just seems obvious. It seems easy. It seems obvious. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's like, a lot of stuff, I think, like, could still be this this world could still be tuned and changed and and iterated upon um yeah curious to see where they go next but well, uh but yeah please where do they go from here jake like where do you think mm. they should go do they do they revisit this world for a third time do they make continue with the systems that they have here do they come up with new powers to replace the ones before like they did in this case what do you think what do you i want? think it's um I think it's over. I I think the next I think the next thing is DLC, and I think that there will be DLC that is like substantial and and I think fills maybe and even in like a like in a story and a mechanical sense maybe there's a DLC that even adds in like a whole new environment that is very different. Not literally this, but something on the level of like, you know how when you go really high up in the sky, all of a sudden the gravity changes. Yeah. Yeah, which was fun and. Actually, when you had to come down from that, I was a little bit like, Ugh, I kind of miss my, my, my big jump. People hop you know? around. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, a more like I a could, Mario game. Yeah, I, I could see something on that level where it's like, okay, Link is like on the surface of the moon. And like, wow, this is crazy. And now all of a sudden we're dealing with like how there being no gravity. And like, I could see that happening. I don't think it's going to be a whole another game. I think that whatever is in the DLC will be it. And I, and I got to think that the next thing for Zelda is is um similar but different it it is a uh they just i just can't imagine them doing something called ultra hand again but maybe something similar where you are like building and creating and like freedom is like a key word like freedom and creativity they like go in that direction more tools different tools things we didn't think about like recall that won't be back uh, the one where you like go through the 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 stuff in the ceilings. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't think that will be back. But I do. But I do think we are going to stay on this design like line of thinking. I think that they want like players to make stuff that they didn't anticipate. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's hard. It's hard to imagine. I don't know. I don't know. As you said, if they can do Ultra Hand again, just because yeah. I feel like, especially with how how we're seeing people already fully use it and exploit it. You know, I mean. Can they do it again without major changes? And I, I don't even know if I want that in my Zelda again. But I, I mechanically, I love it. It's great. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're able to deliver the game around it to fully support it, and at least in the Zelda universe, I want them to scale it back, Jake. I, I yeah. think I want less freedom because I felt more challenged. I, I never felt limited in Breath of the Wild, but I still felt challenged at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's the balance that they lost this time. I was too able, too easily able to accomplish most of what I wanted with minimal. Uh, uh, setbacks, and and I want something that makes me feel more present in the world. So I think what might be cool, I have a couple of ideas. Okay. One, one, one of the things I liked in this game that uh, Breath of the Wild failed on completely was was how boats worked. Like this game actually had proper, to a degree, proper boats. I felt like I could do more more uh, exploration on the sea, even though there's minimal of it in this case. Uh, I think it'd be cool. One of the ideas I have is like there's a giant earthquake. If they want to reuse the world, there's a giant earthquake. It splits the world up into different continents. Like miles apart and you have to actually like sail to each one i think that could be cool It'll make each one feel different but they all have a different shoreline Ooh, and yeah and yeah and i think it might be neat if you have like a boat like in wind waker but this time you can upgrade along the way you know you get enhancements for it you can become you know more of a proper pirate ship or whatever it is i think that could have potential maybe you can build up a crew i know it's could the, could the story too. be pulling them back together doing like pangea yeah exactly right you know? that could be amazing yeah. there's so much potential there yeah um and i think having those restrictions in place where i can't just fly everywhere would make mm. the moment to moment gameplay feel more impactful so i guess and i'm gonna leave that so that's kind of like my rough idea maybe yeah. kind of rein it in oh and actually another idea i have possibly related maybe not is maybe 
the uh, maybe the new powers could be based around more elemental things where you have to make you can do cool things but only using the elements around you you know like if you have like a water bending ability you know like avatar where you can like mm. take a pool of water like make it do cool stuff and you can freeze it creating a walkway for it to go up i don't know i think there's more potential there to just rein it in a little bit but still letting you be creative with the tools that they give you uh but i want to end on one final note here jake then is why do we feel so disappointed for a game that we both spent upwards if not over 100 hours with like why why is it that we've cooled down so much on it when we voluntarily by and large spent so much time with it it's incredibly high quality it's <laughs> it's uh yeah it's a uh, it's polished it's extremely high quality and i think that goes a long way um i think that this is a game that they took and what did I write down? Yeah, more money and time than most games ever get. And I think as people that play a lot of games, we feel that and appreciate that on one level. And then on another level, I don't like a lot of the decisions the game makes. I don't like a lot of the choices. So while I'm like there and I appreciate like how well built the game is and I think... Um, like from an art direction point of view and just from like a general how usable it is and how much it works like that stuff is so worthy of admiration and acclaim um but i but i also think when something is this clear when something is this polished it almost makes it easier to uh criticize in an artistic way because right, yeah. none of that other stuff is in your way. And you don't have to try to envision what they were going for. Instead, we see very clearly what they set out to accomplish and what they did accomplish. And now I can just respond wholly to that. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, mm -hmm. it's obvious there's a lot of effort that went into this game. It's incredibly polished for what it is. The fact that the physics system works anywhere near as well as it does is yeah. nothing short of a small miracle again, especially on the Switch hardware. Um, there's no doubt like a lot of love and care went into this. Um, I, I just for me as a person playing the game as a long time Nintendo fan, as a long time Zelda fan, yeah, it just didn't fully hit the mark. Even if moment to moment, I by and large was having fun until mm. the point I really did start to burn out on it. Like, all right, time to wrap this thing up. Um, and I think that's where my disappointment sets in is the fact that I, I did experience that burnout eventually, and that you know when it ends ultimately, like the conclusion, to everything. I mean, we had you know the rewards along the way combined to the conclusion didn't satisfy me, and so it kind of colors the entire experience much yeah. as this is not the best comparison but i think tears of the kingdom is better than the thing i'm about to compare it to but i was super into lost back in the day i i was addicted to watching it week to week to week yeah. but then there comes a point where i'm like this show just needs to freaking end and mm -hmm. then when it does end it ended for me in a very unsatisfactory way that undermined everything that came before mm -hmm. and I, and that's i feel that to a lesser extent here much lesser extent here but i i again had a lot of fun along the way and nothing that happens in the end undermines that fun that i did have but i also feel like i see so much more potential for everything and i'm like man and the way they realized all the systems they put here and everything else, the wrapping and everything, just didn't fully work for me. And I wish it had because I felt like Breath of the Wild had a stronger foundation that they could have built from in a different direction that may mm -hmm. have been better than the direction they decided to go in, which is kind of an odd one in hindsight. And uh, yeah, again, still fun, moment to moment. I think arguably a better game than Breath of the Wild, but the way it all comes together. It was less of an experience, less you know, of an experience for me. That actually, what you just said actually really illustrated something for me. And I think a lot of media that I like, like art in general, is perspective driven. And it's like, I like to kind of like see the artist's hand behind it and the story they want me to tell and put me on the ride, make me experience, you know, force me to experience the highs and the lows. And right. I don't get that sense in this game at all. Yeah. I like, I don't feel that there is a directorial vision as much as there is like a Nintendo as a committee make you know what i mean making like this yeah like creating like a product yeah 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 no i totally i i totally get what you mean yeah. i yeah we we if we could boil it down for any number of more hours i'm sure beyond what we yeah. already have and i don't want to retread those arguments but yeah there's a lot that's impressive here yeah. but as an overall experience it just i kind of underwhelmed me and i'm like yeah. man i was wasn't hoping for that but you know yeah. what's here is still impressive and uh, I can't wait to get roasted in the comments. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm excited. I Because because there's going to be some people that just show up and go, Jake hates everything, whatever. And there's going to be some people that get to an hour and 41 minutes and they go, wait, no, now he's doubling back on himself. That's contradictory. And I, yeah, I have a lot of love for that person. I Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun one way or the other yeah, seeing what yeah. the comments have to say. Chat, are we way off base? Do you agree with us on any level? What did you think of, yeah. of Tears of the Kingdom? Let us know. So, and uh, let us know where you think the game series could go from here because I'm yeah. curious. Maybe we'll have a whole discussion on that later on. 
in any case, we're going to wrap it up there before we uh, give you more reasons to roast us. So yeah. thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good rest of your week or weekend or whenever I end up posting this, and we'll catch you later. Bye, everyone. Bye.